another big issue that mm -hmm. um, you know continues to um, you know attract our attention. It, it didn't just occur this week, but even up till now, we are still uh, having it reverberating across the policy, and that's the issue of bullying. It's it is on the rise. It's um, a very negative culture that has lived with us for so long. Uh, over two weeks ago, uh, another case, this time around of the lead British International School, uh, surfaced on the internet, leaving such a big bad taste in our mouths. And recently, again, another disturbing viral video has sparked an outrage uh, online. And that's a female student seen flogging another female student. And these ones are even older, not the um, ones we saw of secondary school mm. uh, students now involved last week. And the act uh, has reportedly earned that bully to others and expulsion from the Bamidele Ulumilua University of Education, Science and Technology in Ikere Ekiti. The Police are also set to be carrying out an investigation into the incident. And now we'll be bringing in uh, an expert uh, in school administration to talk about this disturbing uh, trend and how we can prevent it. Uh, Runke Posh Adini is an educator and director of Le Posh School. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Thanks a, a lot. I know, I, I know it, it, it is morning. an early, an early uh, rise for you, but thanks all the same. Uh, so, bullying. So, we are seeing these ones are undergraduates. Earlier, we saw um, you know, secondary school students. Mm -hmm. And um, even if you ask the regular primary nursery school That's child, right. mm -hmm. she will come home and tell you things that will give you a semblance that this is bullying. If, and if not stopped, it, it could escalate further. Yeah. Just give us some, you know, a quick overview of you know, how bullies become the way they are or how they are the way they are. Okay, so um, I want to start by saying that bullying is an unwritten national culture in Nigeria. So it's happening in most homes already. So by virtue in of even homes yeah, already, by virtue of even being, let's use Nigeria because that's where it happened. By virtue of being Nigerian, most people are already bullies because mommy is already smacking you. That is already smacking you to get their way. So that is already happening. And then when your children go to school, they've seen what is happening. We know that there are lots of toxic relationships happening. We see the mom yelling, the dad yelling, hitting, doing all these things. These children now begin to have an emptiness in them. When they go out to the schools, they begin to act out what they've seen, what they've observed. So irrespective of what mom and dad say at home, don't bully, don't hit, but you are doing it. They are seeing it. They see how you treat the domestic workers. They see how you treat the drivers and everybody around you. So they go to school and they will just do the same thing. And then bully, they, bullying, they want to control. Because when they are at home, they are not in control. So it's their time to take control. They pick their targets and they do it. And like you rightly said, even in the preschool, when you start hearing things like, she's not my friend anymore, Don't, she's not playing with us, when they're trying to isolate, you know, so you can see that three-year-olds, four-year-olds can also be bullies. So they see it. We see our policemen, we see everything. Everywhere we go, bullying is happening already. So that is already the background that I can use to set the scene that all, all bullying right. is happening. Where lies the adage which says charity begins at home? Mm -hmm. Because what you just said, all this started from the home. So mm -hmm. where lies that adage of charity begins at home? At what point can we be as role models to our children to be able to behave well at school? You should be a role model to your child. Even I can see that you are glowing already. This is, the, this is the time. This is the time to be a role model. What is charity? Charity is love. Mm. It's teaching kindness. It's teaching empathy. Teaching your domestic workers. I, I keep going back to that because I know how they do. You go to the restaurant, you and see them. Face, you see, they, right? look, they look different from, from the other people in your home. They look different. They're treated differently. Charity begins at home. Love, kindness, empathy. You teach it at home. That is where you begin to do those sort of things. So if you can't even get it right at home, if mom is constantly yelling, it's under pressure, it's just in the, because people assume that dysfunctional homes are homes where the father and the mother are not together. Many homes are dysfunctional and they are nuclear because are constantly in in that toxicity, constantly nagging and shouting at one another. And then the children go, go, to, go out and naturally they were exhibited. Okay, so, so two quick things now, uh, because we cannot exhaust the subject, especially today. But then people are saying, should we arm 
our children our wards, so to speak, physically and otherwise, to ward off uh, bullies, either by word of mouth, if they talk to you, talk back at them, if they beat you, try to at least fight back. Do we train them in, you know, what do you Such advise? Ways. When the first case ca came around, I had a viral, one of my videos go viral because I said it's, it's just ignorance to tell a child to go and fight back. Now, I have an 18-year-old that is very good at karate, taekwondo. She's trained home and mm. abroad. She can do it. But they don't teach you there to fight back. Any good self-defense class does not teach you to just fight. They teach you when you need it. Do you understand? Now, by virtue of what happened in that Abuja school, even if that child tried to fight back, she was out automatically outnumbered. There was, she was, it was already a lost battle. So it could have aggravated. It could have aggravated. What if she, it, there was a battle and then she banged her head and she lost her life and anything happened? What we want to teach again is that love and put our children in an environment that is non-toxic. The parents in that school cannot tell me they don't know that this is a culture in the school. It's impossible. They know. Some people even believe that you go to school to be bullied. That's how you get tough. That's how you are trained in life. They believe that these things should be happening. So if we don't curb the environment where your child is, if I put my child in a school, my child had been bullied in a school. She went to one of the elite schools in Nigeria. The first week, she got a, got a hot slap. Mm. What did I do? I didn't go there and carry phone and social media. No, I went there to speak to them and said, what are you going to do about it? And they did something about it. So you must put your child in a school where you know that if anything happens, there are consequences for the bullying. Bullies. Ir uh, ir yes, ir is exactly. Ir uh, but the parents were not at home. Irrespective of the status of the parents. Irrespective of the status of the parents. The Abuja incident, again, let's go back to it. When that happened, it was not only one person that slapped that girl. I watched that video very carefully. More than one person slapped that girl. Where's the other one? What are the measures that need to be put in place for school owners to be able to monitor their students at school? There's so many. But one of the thing, some of the things that you can do, start with your policy. Now, when your parents come to your school, have they bought you already? When the parents come to the school, and they put their children in the school. Are they aware? Do they read the rules? Do they know that if your child errs, there's a consequence for it? Not that when something happens and they tell your child to do something, then you come badging with your soldiers. Now, if you want to run that kind of school and you've been bought over, then that is going to continue to happen. If you come to La Poche school, know that if your child should err, your child will do something. Something we have. We don't smack them, we don't beat them, but there are consequences. So you must have it in your policies and the parents must adhere to it. There must be whistleblowing for, for it's, it's, it, um, incidents like secondary school. There should be whistle, whistleblowing for people that are not confident enough to, to come back. Awareness. Awareness with campaigns, telling the children about what bullying is, what they should do. And then you should have, take away all those corners. All those corners. Bullies try, um, thrive in areas where they know that there's no adult supervision going on there. Mm -hmm. If you check all those videos that we're watching, mm -hmm. it's either that they, those people, those bystanders are part of the, because bystanding is also bullying. If you don't say anything, you are also part of what is going on. And you are also going to absorb part of the trauma that is going on anyway, whether now or later. So you have to make sure that the environment is non-toxic. Right. That is what should be happening in our schools. Uh, and then, would you advocate like a one solution for you know these cases that we are seeing? We are seeing an undergraduate, we are seeing a secondary school student, and you know people are saying you know if you think deeply about it, like you have said as well, they are all victims. Uh, but for the older one now, what would be you know the right punishment? She's been expelled, uh, expelled, I should say. In in the other case now, what should be the right way uh, to address? the bully, the, the bullies in these two cases. So this is after it has been done. Right. That's what you're yes, Yeah. Yes. After it has been done, obviously. And they've been found out. As yeah, they've been because found out. You also yes. made mention of consequences. Yes. yes. You didn't yes. highlight those consequences. Yeah, yeah. Like, so like, how, do you strike the balance? <laughs> how do you strike the balance now between taking responsibility and yes, you may have had an issue with mm. your foundation, your parenting and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So those, those children, they need something like a, like a rehab. Those children need to be counseled. Those children, they need therapy. And I'm not talking about one day or two days. They need to be handled by professionals. Because already when I saw a lot of things happening, I was watching the media. I was talking about it in the media, uh, on, on social media initially, and I just said, Oof, pack it in, because I don't know who is handling this case. The fact that those children, or at least one of them, was made to apologize to the public that they don't owe an apology is an issue. So that child needs therapy by professionals that know what they are doing. They need to know that. It is a long-term thing. I'm talking about maybe two years or even more of constantly talking to that girl, especially the victim, mm. about what has happened to her so that her self-esteem is not destroyed in the short, medium, or long term. The same applies to the girl that, was, um, that, that is the bully and all the other ones, the boy, all of them. 
constant counseling and therapy so that they can get the healing that they need. And they also have to try and determine where that gap is. If my child is looking and they're bullying, I have an 18 year old, and that day is looking and they're bullying somebody, it's not normal. I know that, that is, my child can never do that. She will speak up and she has done in the past. She was head girl in her school. She will stand up for what is right. So what have you instilled in your children? There's an emptiness, there's a big gap that needs to be filled. All right. Runke Porsche, Deni, that would be a fine place mm. to you know, rest our conversation. Of course, as I said, it's not something that we can exhaust in one day. We will definitely continue our engagement with you. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, for, coming. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks All right. so much.